Cobb & Co is a name synonymous with a period of Australian transport history. During the Victorian gold rush in the early 1850s, 23-year-old Freeman Cobb and three partners arrived in Melbourne from America. Recognising the demand for reliable transport to and from the gold fields, similar to that provided by Wells Fargo during American gold rushes, they established the company that was to become Cobb & Co and imported a number of Concorde style coaches from the USA, with the first running to the gold fields in January 1854. These coach bodies were suspended on leather straps, giving a more comfortable ride than their competitors. Also, they ran to a timetable and, by changing horses at coaching stations every 15 to 30 kilometres, travel time was quicker. They soon outstripped their rivals and extended their network. The four partners sold out after a few years and returned to the USA, Cobb eventually becoming a senator there. Another American, James Rutherford, led the consortium that enlarged the network further and took on major rail contracts, servicing most of Victoria by 1870. Although Victorian railways started about the same time, Cobb & Co chose to complement rail service rather than compete. Gold was discovered in 1862 in New South Wales at Lambing Flat and Cobb & Co quickly moved a number of its coaches to Bathurst to service the resulting demand. In the same year they set up a coach building operation there which by 1866 was the largest of its kind in Australia. However, their transport of cash and gold made them a target for bushrangers and at least nine coaches were held up in the first seven months of their moving into the Bathurst district. Robbery was only one of the hazards of coach travel. Roads were dusty, often poor and non-existent, and even made of corduroy where conditions were boggy. Journeys could take a number of days as average daily travel was less than 100 kilometres although some journeys extended through the night. If the going got too tough, passengers were expected to climb down and walk, and even to push. Expansion into Queensland followed in 1865, providing a service between Brisbane and Ipswich, both towns in the running at one stage to become the capital of Queensland. This linked to the first Queensland railway line between Ipswich and Grantchester, established in the same year. Services soon expanded to cover all of Queensland, utilising up to 3,000 horses that covered over 15,000 kilometres per week. Coachworks established at Charlieville produced over 120 coaches but, although Australian-built stagecoaches used similar leather strap suspension to the Concorde coach, they were generally smaller and lighter with less passenger room, usually designed for only 8 to 14 people. Eventually, a number of different companies operated under the Cobb Co name across Australia, some harmoniously, others not so. At its peak in the 1870s, about 6,000 of their 30,000 horses were harnessed each day, and coaches bearing the Cobb & Co name travelled nearly 50,000 kilometres a week on routes totalling over 11,000 kilometres, making it one of the most extensive coach networks in the world. The name was also seen in New Zealand, South Africa and even Japan. However, rail networks were extending, motor transport improving, and airmail becoming an option. As the 20th century approached, passenger numbers were declining in Victoria and New South Wales, although persisting longer in Queensland. Severe, prolonged drought raised feed costs to the point where they consumed half of the coaching income. Cobb & Co ran Australia's last horse-drawn stagecoach service from Eulabar to Surat on the 14th of August 1924. 
The Cobb Co legacy remains throughout Australia today. Staging posts often developed into settlements and towns, and hundreds of staging posts are still standing, some more or less original, some repurposed, but some neglected. <laughs>